Continuing on for our classwork in topic 1.4, we're going to be dealing with square roots and order of operations. Now, for this, keep in mind this acronym here. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. And what this refers to is whenever you're doing algebraic or arithmetic problems and you have a series of, let's say, parentheses and exponents, you're going to do what's there first as you go from left to right. And then when you finish with that, clearing exponents and parentheses, you do multiplication division, again, from left to right, whatever comes first. And once you've done all of that, you then do the subtraction and addition, whichever comes first, from left to right. So let's take a look at number one here. We have a negative two times four. Well, that looks like multiplication. I don't see any parentheses here, except for this one. So that's going to be a negative two times four is a negative eight. Now, this next one's a little tricky because it says a negative 16 divided by eight. So that's division, so we need to do that. Now, that will give us a negative two. So the answer then from this, following our order of operations, is a negative 10. All right, now we'll give you number two to do, so you get to see what you could do on your own, and then we'll do number three. But we'll review these one at a time. All right, let's give you some time now. Okay, let's go on to our next one. Here we have the innermost parentheses here. This is 9 times 1 is 9 minus 2. So in these parentheses, you're going to get a 7. And there is a 9 still in these brackets, so this is going to be nine plus seven is going to be 16. Now, again, we're saying this was in parentheses, we got a 16, in the sense it's still in a parenthesis there, but now we're gonna divide it by a negative four. This gives us a negative four then from all of this part, and we have a five. So our answer here is going to be a 1. Hopefully that's what you got. Going on now to number 3. Again, this is multiplication. So we do that first. This is going to be 16. Then there's our negative sign. Now, this is in parentheses, so we do that. That's going to be a 9 that we're going to square. So that's an exponent. So this then becomes 16 minus 81, and that will give us a negative 65. All right, if you have a calculator, let's see if you can find the square root of this. And this is 19. Now, this next one is quite a challenge. We'll give you a little bit of time and see what you get. Okay, so I would put a negative 7 tenths here. Now, this is plus. Now, can I simplify this already? This is... 
four eighths. Could I make that one half? Absolutely. And four over four, what did we say that was? Well, that's going to be a one. So I've simplified that already, but now I have a division. And can I simplify that? Yes, that's going to be three fifths. And then I have a plus two thirds. So again, part of the art in this is to study it and see what you can do to simplify. So following that, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, I'm just going to leave this 7 tenths alone here. Now I'm going to multiply 1 half times 1, and I get 1 half. So all of this would simplify here to 1 half. Now the rule for division of fractions is to change it to multiplication. And we do that by taking the division sign, change it to multiplication, and then flip this fraction, that is, take its reciprocal, which is going to be 5 thirds, and then we still have this addition here. Now, when we multiply this together, we now get, and I'll get over here so I have a little more room, a negative 7 tenths. That's this. One half of this is going to be plus 5, 6. Just multiply our numerators, multiply our denominators, and then plus 2 thirds. Now I have to have a common denominator. I want to add all this up. And as I look at it, I see it could be a 30. So I'm going to multiply each of these fractions to make the denominator a 30. And using that technique of multiplying it by 1, I'm going to use here a 3 over 3. That makes my denominator 30. Here I'm going to multiply this by 1 in the form of 5 over 5. That makes this 30. And this I'm going to multiply by 10 over 10. Okay, so all my denominators now are 30. My numerator here is a negative 21. This is 25. And this is 20. So I then get a negative 21 and a positive 45. That leaves me with 24 thirtieths, but they want that reduced to its simplest term. I can take a 6 out of each one, and this becomes 4 fifths. Okay, let's go on to our next part.